Hello students, here we have a question paper problem. Prove that phi 1 of x, comma phi 2 of x form a basis for the solutions of the second order Euler equation. In our previous lecture, we learnt about Euler equation, where we saw the solution of the Euler equation. So this was the solution that we obtained in our previous lecture. And here in general I have written for x or greater than 0. We found it for x greater than 0 as well as for x lesser than 0 which was modulus of x power r1, modulus of x power r2 and modulus of if the roots are distinct and modulus of x power r1 and modulus of x power r1 log of modulus of x when the roots are equal. So this was the solution that we have obtained. Now we have to show that these solutions that is phi 1 of x and phi 2 of x in both the cases form a basis for the solutions of the second order Euler equa Euler's equation. So in order to show that it forms a basis it is enough if we show that uh, these two solutions are linearly independent. So if they are linearly independent to one another then that is, if, if the two solutions are linearly independent, then they form a basis of the solutions of the second order Euler's equation. So, uh, the task here is to show that the solutions phi1 of x and phi2 of x are linearly independ independent in both the two cases. That is, the first case will be r1 not equal to r2 and the second case will be r1 equal to r2. So, let us prove that now. When do we say that two solutions are linearly independent? Two solutions phi1 and comma phi2 are linearly independent on an interval i if and only if constants on c1 comma c2 are such that c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 is equal to 0 for all x on i implies c1 is equal to 0 and c2 is equal to 0. So this is the definition of linearly independent of above when the two solutions are linearly independent then c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2 equal to 0 has to imply that c1 is equal to 0 and c2 is equals to 0. So taking this we are going to prove uh, that c1 equal to 0 and c2 equal to 0 now. And we are going to consider interval in which x is not equal to 0. So, the first case here will be R1 not equal to 0. So, now when R1 is not equal to 0, we know that phi1 of x is equal to x power R1 and phi2 of x is equal to x power R2. Now, if we consider C1 phi1 plus C2 phi2 is equal to 0, then we will have C1 x power R1 plus c2 x to the power r2 is equal to 0. Let us mark this as equation 1. Now on differentiating this equation 1, we get c1 r1 x power r1 minus 1 plus c2 r2 x power r2 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now we shall uh, mark this as like uh, we, we shall uh, mark this as equation 2. But before that, we shall uh, multiply this equation by x. So, on multiplying by x, we get c1 r1 and when we multiply x with this term, it will become x power r1 plus c2 r2. Okay. That this has to be in the base. So, c2 r2 and then x to the power r2 is equal to 0. So, let us mark this as equation 2. Now, we shall solve equation 1 and equation 2 in order to find the constants c1 and c2. So, now if you see, we can multiply this equation 1 by r1 so that we will be able to subtract these two terms. So, by multiplying equation 1 by r1, so what do we get? So, we get this to be C1 R1 x power R1 and then plus C2 R2 x power R2 is equal to 0. And from equation 2, we have C1 R1 x power R1 
plus c2 r2 x power r2 is equal to 0 on subtracting both on both like uh, subtracting these two equations what do we obtain these two get gets cancelled and here we obtain it to be uh, we can see that r2 x power r2 is common okay and so and here it should be r1 kindly make this correction students because we are multiplying with r1 here it has to be r1 so we can see that c2 and x x power r2 is common so we can write this as c2 multiplied with r1 minus r2 x power r2 is equal to 0 now already we know that x is not equal to 0 and r1 is not equal to r2 so therefore r1 minus r2 cannot be equal to 0 so therefore c2 has to be equal to 0 so from this we obtain that c2 is equal to 0 on substituting c2 equal to 0 in equation 1 this full term becomes 0 and we get this to be c1 x power r1 is equal to 0 but we know that x is not equal to 0 and hence c1 will be 0 so we started with c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 is equal to 0 and we have proved that c1 equal to 0 and c2 is equals to 0 which shows that the uh, solutions phi 1 of x equal to x power r1 and phi 2 of x equal to x power r2 are linearly independent so we have proved this in the first case now we shall consider the second case and we shall prove the same so now case 2 will be so now here case 2 will be r1 is equal to r2 that is both the roots are equal roots so in that case the sol we know that the solution phi 1 of x is equal to x power r1 and the solution phi 2 of x is equal to x power r1 log x so now we have to show that these two solutions are linearly independent for which we have to show that c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 equal to 0 must imply c1 is equal to 0 and c2 is equals to 0 so first we shall consider this so c1 phi 1 so x power r1 plus c2 phi 2 that is x power r1 log x is equal to 0 now in this equation we can see that x power r1 is common to both the terms so dividing this equation by x power r1 we obtain c1 plus c2 log x is equal to 0 now on differentiating this equation on both the sides we get with respect to x so differentiating with respect to x what do we get now this is a constant so it becomes 0 plus c2 multiplied with the differentiation of log x is 1 by x is equal to 0 so from this we get c2 to be equal to 0 so we have obtained c2 as 0 now we have to substitute the c2 in one of uh, in this equation so in here when we apply c2 as 0 we get c1 x power r1 to be equal to 0 but we know that x is not equal to 0 which implies c1 is equal to 0 therefore we started with c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 equal to 0 and we have obtained c1 equal to 0 as well as c2 is equals to 0 which proves that the solutions phi 1 and phi 2 are linearly independent so hence we can say that the solutions phi 1 of x comma phi 2 of x form a basis for the solution of the Euler equation so hence we have proved this now if the Euler equation is asked for 15 marks then it is a necessary part to prove that these solutions form a basis also so in the in the previous video we have ended up with the solutions of the Euler equation but if it is asked for 15 marks we have to add uh, I mean we have to uh, show that the, it, the, these two solutions form a basis and then complete the proof hope you have understood the concept of uh, the solutions being a basis for the Euler equation. Thank you.